The editor allows you mouse-driven modification tools for the objects in your model space. The next tool is our Move tool, and that tool allows us to select objects and move them along each of the X, Y, and Z axes. When we enter edit mode, it is highlighted by default, as you can see. If I want to move an object, I can select it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my camera and hit home, which will get me really close to these incandescent fixtures that we put in. I'm gonna click on a fixture and you can see that it turns blue because it's selected in the augmented edit space. And I also get measurement offsets from my origin. So you can see along each axis that I am two foot six, negative five feet, and nine foot three away from my origin. At the base point of my fixture, you'll see that I have uh, X, Y, and Z arrows with corresponding colors. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, come over here. And what I can do is zoom in and click and grab one of those and it's gonna move my object in that direction. So you'll see that I clicked on the blue arrow and I'm moving it up and down. I'm gonna click on the red arrow. I'm gonna move it along the X axis. And this gives me the ability to position this fixture in space in a bit more of an organic way than typing in the positional data like we did in patch earlier. You'll also notice that as I move this fixture, the positional information in my inspector is changing, and that's live updating throughout the console. So if I were to go into patch right now, I would see that this new XYZ information is updated in there as well. The next tool down is scale, and scale is used on objects that are not fixtures. Because fixtures are absolute, they cannot be scaled. So for this example, I'm just gonna click in empty space here, and I'm gonna zoom back and you'll see that I have a ground object, and that just appears as a default object in every new show file. So if I click on that, and I click on scale, you'll notice that my nodes turn from arrows to blocks, and I can click on the block and scale that object along each XYZ axis. Now it's important to note that because this ground is a 2D object, it does not have the ability to scale in the Z space, but we will look at some objects that have three-dimensional spacing in another example. The other thing that's useful here is my white node, and that white node at the center will allow me to stretch proportionally in all directions, and that would include Z if Z was available for this object. The next tool down is rotate, so I'm gonna go grab a fixture again. I'm gonna take my camera, put it to my home value, and I'm just gonna select another fixture. And when I click on rotate, you'll notice that I get these planetary orbs and I can click on them and rotate the fixture in that plane. So let me move my camera to a better location. And I can rotate that along that axis as well. Again, you'll notice that it's rotating the object along its base point, not necessarily along the center of the object. Rotate will also respect a snap angle setting, and you can set that in preferences. So by default, your snap angle is five degrees. For today, I'm gonna change that to 15. And if I turn snap on while I'm in rotate mode, you'll notice that as I rotate that fixture, it's now snapping in 15 degree increments. If I wanna free rotate again, I can turn snap off and it will go back to moving the way that I expect it.